Some estimates say that as many as 80% of Section 8 housing voucher holders are being denied housing by landlords, right? Texas. I do love me some Texas. Texas is one of the uh, more conservative states, red states. If you're investing in real estate, you like the politics of a place like Texas. But let's talk about this story that recently came out about these 80 percent of Section 8 holders that are being denied. And we'll go over the nuances and we'll provide some color on this from an actual uh, factual basis as opposed to some woke journalism that you're all used to seeing. Let's go. All right, y'all. So this story, this story that I want to discuss with you, right, comes out of Texas, Fort Worth to be example, right? Fort Worth's high voucher denial rate intensifies as rental prices rise. Now, this journalist, this woke-ass journalist, Sandra Sodek, Sadek, whatever her name is, that freaking bitch, she writes this, uh, this, like, woke hit piece on landlords, essentially, right? This, like, woke nonsense, which isn't, uh, isn't really based in reality, right? And they, they centered a piece around this chick, Connie Resendez. She's 68, okay? And she's got her teenage grandson living with her. And they love to do this, the liberals, right? The news media. They love to take uh, somebody like this woman. Look at her. That's a... That's a cute little old lady, man. She looks like you want her to be your grandma, right? She looks like the person uh, that's going to make you some great cookies. And this is what woke journalists love to do. They love to take, like, random people like this and, and martyr them, turn them into a victim, and then they take the landlords and, and just paint them as pieces of garbage, just just horrible human beings, right? And, and that's what this whole article did, right? And if you want to read the whole article, you can. I'll link it below. Uh, but essentially, in a nutshell, y'all, this the story is this chick, Section 8, okay? She's on Section 8. She lived in basically the ghetto. She lived in the hood. And she wanted to move out of the hood into a nicer part of town. And then the whole story like centers around all the lo hoops she had to jump through and all the landlords denying her because they don't want to accept her voucher, right? That, that in the nutshell is the article, right? But what, what they do, right? They take her, tug on your heartstrings, make you guys think that the landlords are the bad guy. That's not reality, bro, okay? And I love a place like Texas because landlords are allowed to operate without being handcuffed, okay? I recently did a story uh, on Washington, D.C. Some landlords in Washington, D.C. were fined $10 million, amongst some other things, uh, for not accepting Section 8 voucher holders into their properties, right? That's the differences between investing in a red state, a place like Texas, in some liberal woke hellhole, like Washington, D.C., right? I'll link that, that, that story to the notes below, too, right? In America, you should be able to choose not to rent your property to somebody who is too irresponsible to pay for the roof over their own head. If you're an adult and you can't pay for the roof over your own head, you need the taxpayers to step in and pay for your livelihood, pay for your survival, by definition, you are an irresponsible human being. And as somebody who's managed thousands and thousands of tenants, I have actually made my money, made my fortune in the Section 8 space. I actually, I will give it straight to you on Section 8, and I will talk about all the negatives about Section 8, and we discuss that all the time because there are, there is an avalanche of negatives that come with being a Section 8 landlord. But with all that in mind, folks, you should know that I've actually made millions of dollars being a Section 8 landlord, right? So there, there are pros and there are cons. And ideally, you want to be investing in a place where you have the freedom uh, to, to, to take advantage of the pros but not be just, you know, eviscerated by the cons of it all, right? And we'll discuss. But Essentially, Texas is a place where you can do that. Washington, D.C. is a place where you cannot, okay? So, as far as Section 8 goes, folks, 
in reality, and I want you to stick around to the end of this show. Uh, the end of the show, John, what I want you to do, I want you to play them like three, four, five minutes of just some of that Section 8 carnage that they love on the Tennis from Hell show. Show them what they're really going to see. Because, like, why should they take my word for it, right? I could just be up here just spitting lies, right? Just spitting a bunch of bullshit making shit up. But guess what? I ain't going to do that. Because my name isn't Sandra Sadek, okay? I'm not some fucking clickbait fake news journalist, okay? I'm going to show you guys actual facts. I live, eat, breathe, and sleep Section 8 real estate, okay? So I'm going to show you guys what really happens, right? Because I, I walk the walk. I don't just talk the talk like this bitch, okay? I walk the walk. So you actually see what it's really like to be a Section 8 investor. Because I'm sure shit going to let you know that this fucking lovely little grandma that I just want to give her a little fucking hug and say, thanks, Grammy, and give her a kiss and then have her give me a nice little oatmeal cookie on the way out the door. That, folks, is one in a million, Okay, the more common Section 8 tenant is a savage animal of a human being who's horribly irresponsible and will fucking rip your property to shreds. Don't take my word for it, though. Stick around to the end of the video, and I will show you five minutes of Section 8 tenants just destroying, eviscerating people's property. Okay, with that in mind. What you need to understand is if you have properties in the ghetto, in super low-income neighborhoods, folks, the majority of people that are going to live in a low-income or a dangerous neighborhood are only living there because they are unqualified to live in a nicer neighborhood, okay? Typically, these are your bad apples, right? The bottom echelon of society. When you're in the bottom echelon of society, you can make money as a landlord, but you got to mitigate your risks. One way you mitigate your risks, folks, is by using Section 8 tenants in that particular situation, right? This is why it makes sense to have the freedom to operate Section 8 properties as you see fit, right? You don't want to be in a place like D.C. where they fine you $10 million, right? You want to be in a place like Texas where... If you got to deny 80% of them, you got to deny 80% of them, right? You're trying to run a business, not a fucking charity like these woke journalists will lead you to believe, okay? So when you're in the ghetto, when you're in a rough neighborhood, okay, Section 8 tenants pose the least amount of risk to you because in those particular neighborhoods, it's very hard to get people to actually pay rent. A lot of times they won't pay their rent. You have to evict them. They destroy your house, okay? So even though Section 8 tenants have a very high propensity of damaging your property, when they're in low-income neighborhoods, folks, okay, uh, the fact that they're going to probably be very rough on your property and damage it is the least of your worries because at least you get to consistently collect that rent. Now, when you move on to nicer neighborhoods, right, would you rather rent your nice properties to a tenant who's got an above 700 credit score, they have a good job, uh, they're very responsible, or would you rather rent that property to some person who is unwilling to go to work and is just living off the taxpayer's dime? Now, I know these woke journalists are going to lead you to think that you're getting this cute little grandma. That ain't reality. That is like one out of every 10,000 Section 8 tenants, okay? The other 9,999 of them are freeloaders. And you wouldn't want to expose your very nice property to a freeloader when you have the option of like a professional tenant with a good credit score, good income, who's shown in the past that they are highly responsible. Now, back to the ghetto. That tenant I just described, the good credit score, good job history, they don't want to live in the ghetto. They ain't living there, so your Section 8 tenant's less risky because you got a bunch of irresponsible tenants. You want the one who's got the guaranteed rent because at least they ain't going to steal rent from you. In the nice neighborhood, you want the better tenant, the tenant that poses a lower level of risk to you, right? So that's why this chick is finding all the issues when she tried moving out of the ghetto to moving into an area where she's competing with people who actually pay for their own fucking bills, right? It is what it is. Maybe this lady's really not even as great or as nice as they're making her out to be. I don't, I don't know. I don't know this lady personally. Obviously, any particular person uh, could be nice or not. Like, you know, was she on Section 8 when she was 38? Like, oh, she's 68 now, so, you know, 
we feel bad for her. We're like, oh, she's older, right? But, like, you know, maybe she was a fucking lowlife at 38, right? And she's just been riding the fucking government gravy train this whole time. I don't know. But even if she is a great person, that is the extreme minority. So landlords are not the bad guy in the situation. They are just trying to mitigate their risk, right? Like, say you're trying to sell your car and somebody meets you in your driveway and uh, they want to take your car for a test drive. You're like, oh, okay, you want to take my car for a test drive. They're like, yeah, but just so you know, uh, I just got out of jail. I did 20 years because I had an entire career of being a car thief. Um, I love stealing cars. I actually went to jail five times because I run this scam uh, where I tell people I'm going to buy their car, they let me test drive it, and then I just steal that motherfucker, right? Would you give them the keys to your car and let them test drive your car? Probably not, right? Because you are utilizing something in their background to lower your risks of having your car stolen, right? Well, landlords, they do the same thing. Oh, you're too irresponsible to pay your own bills and be a productive member of society? You, you have a huge history of uh, moving on after destroying landlords' properties. I'm probably not going to want to rent my really nice property to you when there's somebody that uh, has a much better background, right? That's why places like Texas uh, that have reasonable landlord-tenant laws, they do these things, right? It's not to use and abuse cute little grandmas like this, which are not the reality of the type of tenant base you're going to see, folks. Uh, so, yeah. It sucks that, uh, I guess it sucks for those 80% of people that can't find housing in these, like, nice neighborhoods. But, hey, guess what? All you have to do is become more responsible, get a better job, and you can get better housing, right? Shit costs money in America, right? You don't get a Cadillac for the price of a Kia. You want to drive a Kia? You put in the Kia effort? Great, fine. But don't complain about the people that are driving Cadillacs. You want to drive a Cadillac? Work harder, okay? Because it ain't the landlord's job to provide you the life of your dream when you ain't going to work for it, right? So I support those landlords and their decision uh, to properly run their business and mitigate their risks. And they are why this story specifically, the fact that landlords are able to do this, is why I only invest in red states. I would never go to some woke blue state where articles like this, people take it, uh, you know, as complete fact when it's truly fiction. And to show you how fictional it really is, let's end it here with four or five minutes of actual Section 8 reality, not fucking fluffed up stories like this. Yeah, the basement's pretty fucked up. There's Tyvex who's here from wherever it's your last time. Yeah, it was us. Yeah, just make sure we're showcasing all this shit. Yo, if somebody tries to solve you. Sounds like a plan. I mean, we're, we're both probably faster than Pete. <laughs> this has got this camera. Oh, shit! <laughs> dude, look at this bedroom, dude. Bro, I don't even want to come in here if I work with yeah. <laughs> like, I almost need to burn my shoes yeah. out. That's why. That's all human dust, too. You guys hungry for some chicken? Chicken. Oh, look at that. Oh, you don't see that every day. Oh, I won't zoom in. Those are fucking decomposed chicken wings. There's fucking nothing left of them. Oh, there's a security door, but... They're just gonna break it right off. It's not much of a security door. <laughs> Do not enter police order. Uh, I guess they did get a uh, notice that said that they were being evicted, so... I guess that counts as police order. Makes me wonder if anybody is in that middle unit, if they saw that this door was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 
supposed to be, but I'm still not. Can't imagine. I can't even movers. imagine living like that. Get the movers guys Crazy. back here. They need to pack the stuff up and get it out. Well, to be fair, this technically counts as garbage. Yeah, it So. Ho, ho, ho. Looky here, boys. That right there. That's a fucking shoe right there. <laughs> I ain't never seen one like that. It's a mass damn deal right there. Fucking little, little slut. <laughs> You know what bugs me about these, and like in general, when we do ones in units like this, and I find stuff like that, mm -hmm. there were kids living here. Oh yeah. Like some adult had probably the means to pay their rent. They decided not to. They destroyed the property, and in the process of destroying the property, they just let their kids be in here. Yeah. Like you're a piece of shit. That's awful. Yeah. Oh my god, the cat box, dude. Just show him shit. <laughs> there's so much shit right there. There's bird cages, there's a hamster or maybe rabbit cage. Of course, there's plenty of shit. Make that too. I don't know if I can do an estimate yet, dude. It's, uh, it's tough to breathe. It's dark as fuck. There's like literal just feces on the wall. Well, it's, it's There's like over, shit splattered. It's all over the look under the look under the kitchen table. No one's Oh my god. <laughs> shit everywhere. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.